Whoa, this is one dark cave. It's the door that worries me, Georges. Well, I'm sure the door will open again if we give it a minute. No need to panic. Now we panic. Help! I gotta say, Nico, you're pretty calm about this. Traveling with you, Georges? I've got used to this kind of thing. If I panicked every time a door shut behind us, probably forever, well... You're right. What was I thinking? You see if you can get the door open and I'll go check out the... dark, evil-smelling cave. Fumbling around in the dark wasn't going to be fun. But heck, I'd spent a lifetime doing it, so what was new? The stone door had sealed us in. No way would we have been able to prize it open. Hey. Hi. Any luck opening the door? No, not yet. If you find some light, we can search the rest of the room. Nico was looking calm under pressure, as always. The wall felt like it had something carved into it. I needed some light to tell what the carvings were. For a moment, I imagined falling forever in the dark. But it was just my imagination running wild. The floor was solid. I had no idea what might be lurking in the darkness. I kept telling myself there was nothing there, but I found that hard to believe. I threatened the imaginary thing with the hammer. I felt better instantly. It was just my mind playing tricks in the dark. The place was really spooking me. I needed to find some light. There was one response I could rely on for things that go bump in the night. A hammer. I felt better instantly. I had defeated the imaginary hazards before me using only the power of my mind. Langham had better watch out. The thing had branches like a tree. Tree or not, it was cold to the touch like it was made from stone. It felt cold and smooth, like worn stone. Face, arms, it was definitely a statue of some sort. It was cold to the touch and felt like carved rock. The carved stone felt like the branches of a tree. I could feel something smooth and spherical with clumps of what felt like fur or hair. I touched the object again. There was a fingertip-sized hole. I stuck my finger in. It was slightly sticky. I wondered what that was. It was a flat surface like stone. I was pretty sure it was some sort of stone table. It felt cold and smooth, with some indentations along the surface. I couldn't tell what it was in the darkness. It was stone, with a recess in it and... Ugh! An oily liquid in it. There was some kind of thin twine in the middle of it, too. A large stone bowl with some kind of oily liquid in it.
Hey, Nico, I think I found some light. Whoa. It must be Ganon. Ramon said he disappeared while searching the mountains for the tabula. So this is where he ended up. Dead in a cave. Hole in the head dead. Decomposing for decades dead. And on closer inspection, I'd even say blown your own brains out dead. Okay, Georges, I get the point. What is this place? Who knows, but look at the Gnostic symbols. You're right. The colors, the trees. But who is she? It looks like the Virgin Mary, but I don't think it is. What do you mean? The red robes and that whole off-the-shoulder look? It must be Mary Magdalene, of course. Marquez told me that the Gnostics revered her. This place, it's some kind of Gnostic shrine. There's got to be something to release that door. Maybe amongst these carvings. But if it was that obvious, don't you think Ganon would have found it? Hey. What are you looking for? I'm not sure yet, but there has to be some way of opening the door. Laughing boy over there may beg to differ. But Georges, he didn't have a woman's eye for detail. A group of figures looked up towards the tabula. They were all colored red. I'd seen something like it before. The carved figure had once been green. I wondered if it was a representation of Jehovah. Blue paint was peeling from the carved figure. I wondered if it was an image of Lucifer. A large carving of the tabula veritatis symbol. All the other figures in the scene seemed to be supplicating themselves to it. The pillar had been carved into the shape of a tree and painted green. I knew it represented the tree of life. There were ancient scratches on the plinth, as if someone had moved the statue. I'm sure that this is Mary Magdalene. The red robes. It all makes sense. The Madonna would be wearing blue. So, who's the child? Well... According to the Gnostic Gospels, when Mary kissed the lips of Jesus, she, uh... Oh, I see. Yep. So the Gnostics think that the suckling child is... I guess so. Red-robed and bare-chested, the statue was nothing if not striking. I realized what I'd been so energetically prodding in the dark. Ganon was long dead. Getting up close and personal to Ganon's leathery corpse wasn't pleasant, but we had to figure out how to get out of there. Ganon had certainly been busy before he blew his brains out. I wonder what he'd been up to. It was a fedora, just like the one in Ganon's trunk back at the castell. The years hadn't been kind to it. It was an old pistol. I guessed Ganon had used it to blow his brains out. I picked up the old gun. It was too corroded and rusty to ever be fired again. It was an old water canteen. The contents had long since been drunk. It was an old flashlight. It looked like it died around the same time as Ganon. Ex luce veritas. Out of light, truth. I'd seen the same words on the fresco at Castel de Sons. Oil in the bowl of the lamp fed a wick, illuminating the room with a warm glow. The circle of iron was set into an ornate frame that covered the oil lamp. It had to be Ganon, in which case the body had been there for decades. There was a bullet hole in the side of his head. Just like us, he'd been trapped. He'd chosen suicide. 
the long dead remains of a person slumped over the table with a bullet hole in his skull. Tucked under Ganon's desiccated arm was an old map. It had writing on it. I prized the map out from under the arm of the corpse. It looked like Ganon had scrawled some kind of last testament onto this map. My friends, I know that you will eventually find me, but by then it will be too late. I have decoded the tabula, and I know our destiny lies in paradise. The key to the power of God is in our hands. I die secure in the knowledge that you will now be able to complete my work. Tell my family that I died doing my duty, that I surrender my life gladly to the cause. In the light of the day, these words will fade, like our souls. But rest assured that when they do, their echoes will guide us to where we will meet once again. I'm not sure, but it looks like crafty old Ganon left a secret message in his testament. The shape matched the symbol of the tabula veritatis from the painting. This had to be it. Nico! What? Is this what I think it is? It must be. The tabula veritatis. So Genan did find it. It so small, so innocent looking. Why would Simeon call it evil? Why so many deaths for this? And why go to such lengths to keep it hidden? Unless it is as genuinely dangerous as Simeon claimed. The question now is, what do we do with it? An old black and white photograph. The subject was hard to make out. Someone had written on it. The photograph was of an ancient clay tablet. Ganon had written on it. Someone, presumably Ganon, had taken the time to translate the inscription. At a glance, the inscription seemed to relate to the exploits of someone called the Sun King. The symbol on the tablets looked similar to the ones etched into the face of the Tabula Veritatis. If the translation is right, the symbol La On represents the Sun King. If the rest of the translation is anything to go by, sounds like he was quite the badass in his time. Apparently, the symbol Ib On Shi meant three kingdoms. Shi Shi translates as Mountain Kingdom. Ganon had marked this symbol with the letter B. If Ganon's translation is correct, the symbol La Ha Shi represents the Sun City region. Ganon had marked this symbol in red with a letter A. Du A Shi apparently means the Two River region. The symbol Ku Is I was translated as People Travel Look. Some kind of prehistoric tourists? It looks like Ku U is the symbol for the tabula veritatis in this language. The symbol G Ip Ku meant ending enemy people. I'd guess that means poking people with pointy sticks rather than kissing and making up. If Ganon's translation is correct, the symbol Ka Ip Ha means burning enemy cities. Whoever this Sun King guy was, he certainly had a point to prove. Ganon had translated this symbol, Du U, as four victories. If Ganon's translation is correct, the symbol La Ji Shi represents the Sunset Mountain. Sounds like a theme park ride. Ganon had translated this glyph, Ah Shu as Blood River. Doesn't sound like a vacation spot. The symbol Zhu Ha was translated as the Young Cities. Ganon had marked this symbol with the letter E. If Ganon's translation is correct, the symbol Ip Lu Ap means Enemy Godhouse. Probably the temple of some rival deity? The symbol La On I meant the Sun King looked. Si Ip Ju was translated as the Gardens of Enemy Dead. According to Ganon's translation, this symbol is Ai Zhu Lu, which means witnessing the start of Godhead. I guess that finding the tabula was the easy part. 
Figuring out its purpose was a different proposition. The tabula was engraved with a number of curious-looking symbols. These symbols looked just like the ones on the photograph of the clay tablet. I wondered if Ganon's notes on the photograph might help me decode the tabula. That was the first row of symbols cracked. It was all starting to make sense. It was a location, but I needed to know where it was. When I held the map up to the flame, something started to change. The writing on the map started to react to the heat. Well, I'll be darned. What is it? At a guess, the locations on the map might match up with the ones he's marked on this photograph. If this letter matched the one on Ganon's translation, this must be the location of the Sun City. If the letters match the ones on Ganon's translation, this must be the Mountain Kingdom. If this letter match the one on Ganon's translation, this must be the location of the Three Rivers region. If this letter is the same location as the one marked D on Ganon's translation, this must be Sunset Mountain. If the letter E matches the one on Ganon's translation, this must be the location of the Young Cities. So, these are directions. Begin at Sun City, travel five days east to a river, travel south six days through a desert to the source of four rivers. Hey, Nico! I've cracked it! Fantastic! The Tabula Veritatis, it's a set of directions! Take a look at this map. The inscription says to start here, at Sun City. Ganon hid the location in his map. It then says to travel five days east to a river, then turn south and travel six days through a desert to the source of four rivers. And what is that? I'm not sure, but it must be important, right? Right. 
Important enough for the Gnostics to try and keep it a secret for thousands of years. And guess what? I think I may have found a way out. You have? Look, while you were busy playing Ancient Scholar, I found this. What did it do? I'm not sure. It didn't open the door. Perhaps we're missing something. Must be. If Ganon died looking for a way out, there has to be more to it than just a hidden button. Then let's keep looking. Hey! We any closer to getting out of here? There has to be a way to release the door. Something that Genan missed. Or something that Genan didn't know. That's right! This was a Gnostic shrine! What would the Gnostics have done? It was a tiny button. So small I could hardly see it. Kudos to Nico for spotting it. In the lost language of medieval mechanisms, that noise was the sound of disappointment, unfulfilled dreams, and sadness. Nothing had happened. It was an old rusty pistol. Check out this old gun. It's ancient. Hey, watch where you point that thing. It was a primitive oil lamp carved into the fabric of the cave. Its light filled the chamber. The ornate lamp warranted a closer look. Why didn't Marquez want his medallion back? The medallion fitted snugly into the socket. Whoa, would you take a look at that? The light from the medallion is illuminating this green figure. This could be our ticket out of here. If you're right, that explains why Genam never got out of here. He didn't have the medallion. Nothing had happened. I gave the statue a push, and it turned anti-clockwise. I gave the statue another shove. That sounded like something important happened. That sounded like something important happened. Is that the door? 
Thank God. I was getting worried we'd be trapped here, just the two of us forever. There could have been worse ways of being trapped forever. It is the door. Come on, Georges. Finally, the door was open again. I needed to grab the medallion before we left. It was way too useful to leave behind. Nico and I had the tabula veritatis at last. Now all we needed to do was to find Eva and rescue Marquez. And make our getaway. Don't die on me now, old man. Jules, it's Landon. Stay back. For the last time, where is the tabula? You'll never find it. It's here in this chapel, isn't it? Just tell him, Papa. I will tell you nothing. Look at your daughter, senor. My man would be happy to hurt her. I cannot let you raise Lucifer. You will bring chaos to the world. George, we have to do something. You're dying, old man. Tell me what I want to know. You'll never find it. Nico was hiding in the cave entrance. I don't know what to do. Somehow, we've got to distract Langham. Charles, we've got to stop Langham. Langham didn't know we were there, yet. Langham had a gun, and I needed a plan before I stepped out of cover. Marquez was clearly worried about Eva. I couldn't risk Langham seeing us. Eva was being held by the guard, but she was only concerned with her father's safety. Trying to talk to Eva wouldn't have been an option. It would have just given us away. The guard was holding Eva captive. I didn't want to attract attention to myself without a plan. I didn't want Trevor getting hurt. I wondered momentarily whether to attack Langham with the hammer. But the head was small and the shaft weak. I needed something more threatening. With luck, Langham wouldn't notice that the gun was useless. Hold it there, Langham. Well, if it isn't my least favorite American, where is the tabula? Even if I did have it, why would I give it to you? Because you don't have a choice. For God's sake, shoot him, George. Yes, go on. Shoot me, why don't you? Don't push me. That gun would never fire. Give me the gun before you hurt yourself. I didn't rate my chances with just a rusty old pistol. Now, do you have the tabula? I don't have it. We couldn't find it. You're lying. I promise you I will kill the old man. I ask again. Do you have the tabula? If I give you the tabula, then you promise you'll let us all go free? I give you my word. No, George, no. So, the tabula veritatis. Actually, I will need to take the girl with me. The old man would just slow us down. No, I'm staying here. My father needs medical help. If he doesn't get it, he will die. Oh, really? Uh, no! Problem solved. Langham, you'll rot in hell for what you've done. Hell? Quite the opposite, believe me. The world will be a better place, George, once Jehovah has been destroyed. What? Lucifer will set us free. You can't destroy Jehovah. I can, and I will. 
bring the girl. But you agreed to let us all go free. She may be of use yet. One of my men will be outside. If they try to follow me, shoot them. It would be my pleasure, boss. Eva! Uh. You must get the tabula back. We don't even know where he's going. All we know is that it's somewhere in the Middle East. Nothing else? There was a note, something about our destiny lies in paradise? And we found a map. It shows the source of four rivers, but that's all we have. Can it be? You know what that means? In Genesis, there is a river. It flows from paradise and divides into four. Where is this place? This paradise? Eden is going to Eden. The Garden of Eden? But that's just a Bible story, a myth. No, it's a real place. It's where Jehovah created life, where Lucifer gave Eve knowledge, where the gods are held in balance. And now Langham has the tabula to lead him right to it. Only you can stop him. You must defeat him. But how? Eva, she will know. He'd gone, but I knew he was right. We had to stop Langham and rescue Eva. Marquez was dead. Langham had posted his guard outside the door. Listen, this is a big mistake. You have to let us out of here. You stick your head out of that door and I will put a bullet in it. You must let us leave. I could use the target practice. There was no way I was going to get out there with that armed guard. Leaving that way wasn't an option. The guard had a gun and would have been very happy to use it. Nika was waiting for me to find a way out. Nico, that thug isn't going to let us just walk out. Let me talk to him. Hey, handsome. Could you find it in your heart to let me out? Look, love. I'll just as happily put a bullet in you as your yank friend. If you fancy your chances, then feel free to try and escape. I never miss. You could have just said no. Any luck? I gave you my best charming French damsel. Nothing. I think it's time to start thinking of another way out. Nico, what do we do now? We've got to find a way to get past that guard. There was a door at the bottom of the steps, but I would never have managed to reach it. It was a door to an unknown area of the chapel. I didn't think there was a way down to that door from inside the chapel. The guard was standing by the door. He was pretty angry. Hey, over there! Ah, uh, just try it, sunshine. Yikes. That wasn't going to get me anywhere. It was a rickety old drain pipe. 
it had definitely seen better days. The drain pipe entered a small, flat drain cover. Hey, Nico, how's it going? I'm still here. Hmm, this could be useful. Hey, Nico, I've got a plan. Over. Roger's yours. What are you thinking? Over. I'm gonna place the radio out here. Maybe it'll be enough to distract the guard. Give me a second to set this up, then start talking. Got it. I carefully positioned the radio in the drain. I'm warning you, I will shoot. Nico had distracted the guard. The guard was already pretty worked up. If I wanted to be sure to hit him, I needed to wait till the guard was closer. The hammer hit the guard on the head with enough force to knock him out. Nico, let's get out of here. That guard won't be causing us any more problems. Nico was waiting for me to find a way out. What did you do to the guard? Uh, those steps must have been slippery. He took a little tumble. Nico, look! There's a cable car ready to go. Quick, before Langham locks down the system. You don't think perhaps we should have waited for the next one? Well, we caught it, didn't we? What's all the fuss? Now, if I can just... Open this window, I think we'll be fine. Okay, maybe not. Now, don't panic just yet. I, I'll think of something. Nico looked nervous. Can't say I blamed her. You hanging in there? <laughs> Let's face it, I'm either hanging in here or plummeting to my death. The window catch was on the inside. The catch was on the inside. I couldn't get to it. Our cable car hung from that cable. It looked way too thin for the job. That was the cable holding the other cable car. It was very much out of reach. Any ideas how to get into the cable car? I don't know. Have you tried the door? The door to the cable car was shut. I couldn't quite reach the handle. The door to the cable car was open. Even clinging to a cable car, Nico looked good. I needed to get that window open. Hang on in there. I'm hanging on, Georges! It was the window catch. Damn it! It's a little stuck. Just give me a second. 
Just hurry up! Nico! So, we meet again. I've come for my painting. What painting? La Maledicción. Gesundheit. Don't play games with me. We both know the painting conceals a treasure, Mr. Stobart. You know, even if the painting was yours, I wouldn't give it to you. You're just a common gangster. <laughs> a fine sentiment. But I won't let you cross me again. Again? You stole my ruble. My Platinum 12 ruble. Well, that was just an old coin. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of old coin. Wow. Well, a guy could do a lot of redecorating with that. Ah, uh, enough of your American humor. You will tell me where to find the treasure, and you will tell me now. Not gonna happen. And did you really just say, so we meet again? I needed to try something else. With his beer belly and piggy eyes, she has looked quite jolly. Hello! Down here! Oh, hello, miss. Could you help me out, please? Sorry, no can do. But while you're down there, maybe you can clear something up for me. What? Something you said when we first met's been playing on my mind. Do I have a choice? Exactly. Exactly what? Choice. I don't follow. You see, I'm a determinist. Goes with this line of work. But what you said in London made me ask one of the big questions. Is there such a thing as free will? Because if there is, then I've made some pretty dodgy choices in me time. So help me out a bit here. So, do you have regrets? No, I don't think so. But I am a little worried. This whole free will thing has got me thinking. What do you enjoy in life, Shields? Well, uh, I like footy, a good scrap, and topiary. So, you're a football fan, right? Gotta love the beautiful game. So, if determinism was valid, why would anyone play? What would be the point of it all? Hmm. Sometimes when we lose, that's just what I think. If what you create in Topiary is predetermined, what's the point? Topiary isn't about freedom of expression. It's haughty cultural valium. It makes the voices stop. Can't you stop, Madovsky? As I said, it would be futile to try. His actions are predetermined, like mine. It's lovely chatting, but couldn't we discuss this somewhere more convivial? No way. The boss wants you dead. Why not choose what you want to do? Oh... I need to be sure. Is there nothing you can do to help us, Shears? It's more than my job's worth. We have a choice. We always have a choice. Just like you've got a choice right now. Help us or not. I don't know. I'd like to. But the boss... My philosophy class seemed to be working. So, you're a determinist. Isn't that just an excuse to let Medovsky boss you around? At least I know who's controlling me actions. Do you? Of course. I do as I choose. So, you chose to leap off that cable car, did you? Yes, because you and Medovsky shot at me. You did choose to shoot at me, didn't you? Well, yes. 
but I didn't choose to shoot that geezer in the gallery. Fancy chills. Determinism is just a way to hide from responsibility. Maybe you're right. So what? You never intended to kill Henri? I just wanted to rough him up a little. But the gun went off and the rest is history. Free will didn't come into it. But you'd made a choice not to shoot him. The fact he died was an accident. Hmm. So you think I've got a chance of redemption? See? You didn't choose to kill Henri. He died regardless. Exactly. It was accidental homicide. If by redemption you mean a spell in jail with done off a good behavior, then yes, I think there is a chance for you. And you know what? No, enlighten me. I'm getting too old for this crime, Lark. I think I'm having an epiphany. Of course, it might just be indigestion. <clears throat> no, it's definitely an epiphany. I think you're right. The only thing that has led me here is me and my actions. I'm going to talk to the boss. He's sure to listen to reason. Boss! Boss! What is it, you imbecile? How many times have I told you not to interrupt me when I'm about to kill somebody? Remember what we agreed. I am the big man who takes care of the big things. And I am the little man who takes care of the little things. <laughs> exactly. So, haven't you got a little thing you should be doing? Hmm. There is one little thing, now you mention it. Well, don't let me stop you. Get on with it, you big baboon. If you say so, boss. Oh. Oh, dear. There you go. Free will under orders. Now that is what I call a real paradox. George? You took your time back there. Yeah, Madovsky and I had a lot to catch up on. And you and Shears seem to be getting on just fine. So, I figured you'd holler when you were done. Always nice to see old friends. Oh, thank God it's you two. You would not believe what just happened. Try us. Oh dear, the monks aren't gonna like that. We had a little philosophical disagreement on the way up. Nothing the little TLC won't fix. <clears throat> yeah, they're, they're not really broken, more in uh, a transitional state. It's amazing what a lick of paint can do. What now, Charles? We find Langham, we stop his crazy plan, we rescue Eva, and you win a Pulitzer. <laughs> when you put it like that, George, sounds easy. So, how are we going to catch Langham now? Well, we've got a pretty good idea where he's going. True, Mesopotamia, or Iraq, as it is now. Not exactly a prime tourist spot. Need a lift? I don't think we'll catch Langham in a limo, but thanks. I'm not talking limo, mate. I'm talking Madovsky's full-on, fully-fueled tax and ticket Learjet 60. You think you can get us to Iraq? Wouldn't be the first time, if you know what I mean. I've got the keys, the contacts and a full drinks cabinet. How about it? It's the least I can do. The last thing I remembered was getting on board Madovsky's jet and accepting a cocktail from Shears. Hello? Anybody there? What happened to the lights? Is that better? Whoa! Senor Marquez? Indeed. Hello, George. But you're dead. Does death worry you? You bet. I got a nasty feeling it's coming my way. 
You have no choice. You cannot allow Langham to destroy Jehovah. Lucifer and Jehovah must rule in harmony, or chaos will prevail. Don't listen to him, George. He is here to lead you astray. He is a Gnostic, a heretic. Lucifer is the devil. He should be defeated. Jehovah must reign supreme. Whoa, hold your horses, Padre. I'm no big fan of the devil, but follow Jehovah and what do you get? Subservience, repression, mindless conformity. Not my cup of tea, pal. I'm more into sex, drugs and rock and roll. Bacchus is the god for me. Ah, see what you get when you turn from Jehovah. A paint-spattered hedonist. Don't listen to either of them, George. A heretic and a lazy drunk. Hey, I'm not lazy. Nor I a heretic. I were best forger in the business. And I gladly died for my faith, as did thousands of my ancestors. Whoa, 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 fellas, fellas, please. My dream, my rules, okay? That seems to me that what you call greed, he call ambition, and your subservience is his order. In just about an hour's time, I'm going up against a guy who intends to destroy God. I need advice, practical advice. Have a stiff drink and go down fighting. You're a dead man walking anyway. Nonsense. Put your faith in God and he will be your shield. Don't listen to them, George. They're both wrong. Maintain the harmony. Protect the balance. But how do I... You have the answer in your hands, George. In my hands? Uh, what do you mean? Josh? Josh, wake up. You were dreaming. What? What? Ugh. What was all that about? You were dreaming. Something about sex and drugs from the sound of it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Are we there yet? Well, that looks like the source of four rivers, so the Garden of Eden is right down there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I hope you've had a pleasant flight. The temperature in Eden is a pleasant 30 degrees centigrade. We shall be landing on a flat plain about two kilometers into the desert, which you will find is a pleasant stroll to your destination. Fasten your seatbelt and all that gubbins. Finally, may I take this opportunity of thanking you personally for choosing to fly air shares. We do hope you'll fly again with us soon. <laughs>